Hello, I'm Anna Raimondi, coming to you from the Angel Cooperative in Ridgefield, Connecticut. Welcome to this episode of Talking to the Dead in Suburbia. I'm so happy to welcome my guest today, Micah DeSantis, who totally fascinates me. Micah is a conception catalyst, and she's gifted with a unique ability to be a baby soul whisperer, which to be honest, I have never met anybody who do what you do, and I've met a lot of people. So <laughs> to me, this is just great, especially in a world where so many people are struggling with trying to conceive. Micah works for the physical touch, energy healing, and intuition, often enabling a woman to conceive after only one session. And the percentage of people that, that you have helped is astronomically high. You know, it's interesting that, um, that you just do this by word of mouth and, and people find you who have unexplained infertility and that you're able to help them. So thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm thrilled. Yeah, I mean, I think it's great what you're doing. Um, how did you get into this? Like, how did this happen? How did you know that you could do this? Um, I just, I, I have no idea. Uh, I just, kind of, it just came one day. Um, it started with a, a friend of my sister's, actually, who um, came over to my house, and um, we were talking, and she was telling me how she was struggling to conceive, and she was trying for about a year, and she had been to every kind of doctor, um, and there was no medical reason for her not getting pregnant. So I, I don't know why I said it, but I said, you know, I can help you. Um, but you know, you know, you'll have to have sex tonight. And, you know, I don't know if you know, it was a party at my house. I said, I don't know if you're, if you are going to get home and want to, you know, deal with all this. And she said, Oh, well, just do it here. <laughs> deal with this. Right. It's like, this is a job. Um, and so she said, no, she's like, we'll do it here. I was like, okay. <laughs> um, but anyway, I, I don't know why I did it, but <laughs> I know it's maybe too much detail. Um, but I, I just had her close her eyes and I touched her, um, on her third eye. Um, at the time I didn't even know what a third eye was. So, um, but we, she closed her eyes. I, I touched her and, um, I instantly saw a vision of a baby boy's face. Um, come in and then um that was it and then she, you know they went off and they uh did their thing and about two weeks later um my sister reached out to me and said you know guess who's pregnant and uh she got pregnant that night and um and then it, it just became kind of like almost like a joke like my my other sister said you know she had been trying for a while she said do to me what you did to her so i did it again and then a lot of friends and family would we, we just do it kind of for fun it, i didn't know what was happening so it was just more that's, um, I think, on. how it often happens in this yeah. spiritual world. It comes through kind of from left field, and then you say, oh, my God, I've gained my confidence in this, and so I can do this with other people. And you talk about empowered conception. What does right. that mean? Um, yeah, so that came about after. So um, I, so I, you know, I, I was in a corporate job <laughs> at the time, um, and I wound up getting sick. So I had to leave that job. Um, and then it, it gave me more time to kind of delve into more of, of this realm. Um, so I started to learn more about energy and energy healing and things like that. And um, what I found was that it, it's, the, it's the same healing um, when you're connecting and trying to conceive. It's the same kind of process as trying to conceive a baby or conceive anything. Um, so I call it my the arc process, and it's acknowledge, release, and connect. Um, and the idea is to, when I'm working with women who are struggling to conceive, I'm shifting them from this struggle or this perceived you know issue they're having, um, and kind of bringing the power back to them. And I'm doing that by having them acknowledge exactly what's going on, and that is um, that's from stuff that happening right now, but it, it's also past life stuff. It's ancestral. It's, um, there's so many layers to it. So you're kind of acknowledging everything, like your, your entire soul's journey up to this point. Um, and then we do exercises and different things where we're helping to release any blocks or any, anything that needs to kind of shift out or just realign. Um, and then the third piece is connecting and that's connecting with your actual soul baby. And it's also connecting with your higher self to your guides, to all these other things that, um, a lot of times people aren't even aware of that they're connecting with and working with and, and, and have access to. Um, so that's, that's kind of the empowered 
conception. So it's, it's kind of taking back the control of what's happening and less of the struggle. I, I would think that you could have a practice alone just working with people who are writers going, you know, getting through writer's block, you know, yeah, which is the same that, thing. It's conception. Right, right. You know, and I that, say every time I'm writing a book, it's like giving birth. Right. Yeah, exactly it. And that's why, it, that's why it's the same process no matter who I'm working with. It, you know, I, I work with people who are just trying to heal from other things. So it, it, it's, it's always the same. And it's, that's what's so fascinating to me, you know, is that we create everything in our room. Um, you know, in my case, I happen to be connected with these quote unquote soul babies, but it, it's, it's the same for all. What's a soul baby? It's really, um, it's really just a soul uh, that's, you know, at, at this kind of moment in time that's, you know, coming to the earth. Um, I, kind of, I, I talk about uh, pre-birth to earth. <laughs> so it's kind of um, the ones that are, have, you know, kind of the intention and focus. So their energy is, co is coming through. Um, and that's why, you know, women kind of all of a sudden have this like strong desire to, to have a baby or to be connected in that way. So it's when the, when the soul is kind of at that time when they are coming, looking to come back down to earth. And what, if, what is the percentage of like people success rate you have? Um, about 85%. Um, and that's with, and that's, you know, women, there's so there's women who are, um, who are, it's coming naturally and they're just naturally getting pregnant. Um, I'm also working with women who are going through IVF, IUI, um, adoption, surrogacy. Um, it's all the same because it's all connecting with that soul and it doesn't matter. Um, and that's, and that's a big piece of it is helping women detach from the process and how the outcome will come about. Um, so it, it doesn't matter what it is because you're connecting with that soul regardless if it's coming through you biologically or not. So even, okay, so even if someone's going to adopt. Yes, yes. Yeah, I worked with a client who um, she had had a baby naturally and then she was um, going, trying to have a, a second um, and she knew she did not want to have it um, come through, you know, biologically through her uh, just because of some health conditions that came about from the first one. And she was trying to work with a, sur with a surrogate and nothing was lining up. Nothing was working out. There was all these you know, bad things that came about through it. Um, and we worked on some blocks that she was having personally. And then, then, the sur then she found the right surrogate and the process was completely smooth and she has her baby now and everything. Um, and again, it's, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter how it's coming about. When those blocks are there, they're going to block you regardless. <laughs> yeah. Um, so. You know, I had um, infertility issues. My first child was conceived like that. Um, the second one, my kids are six and a half years apart. And I was so caught up in the process. And then I think finally when I said, you know what, God, just let it happen. Still didn't think I could conceive. And lo and behold, I was pregnant. You know, right. so, you know, it, it's hard to get to that point where you can drop out of the control and right. say, this is in my control, but it's not in my control because it really is a miracle, you know, that how this whole thing happens. So right. what happens like um, with, with people who have lost babies, do those soul babies come back or do they just, what, what happens to those soul babies? Yeah. And um, any, there's, there's so many different ways that can go. Um, but I think the important thing is with that is, you know, there's so many women who go through loss and miscarriage um, or, you know, or even have, have gone through abortions where the way society is, we don't really focus on that. So there's a whole healing process that really does need to take place that it's not so natural for that to be given to a woman, especially with the miscarriages, especially the early on miscarriages where, you know, people are like, okay, well, you know, try, you know keep trying when you're going to try again. And it, it, it just becomes this instant thing that they're supposed to just get over but, and, and a lot of times they don't realize it, but they have connected with a soul on some level. So there is um, a healing that needs to take place through that. And, and it doesn't have to be long and hard and, and anything like that. But again, just acknowledging that um, it, it helps heal that and, and, and then have whatever's going to happen next, whether that same soul is going to come back or if it's a different soul, it heals whatever that journey was for those souls. Because there's, there's always this reason and this connection of why two souls are, are crossing mm -hmm. paths. So, um, so yeah, so, you know, it could be the soul, same soul coming back. It could be a different soul. But there is a purpose why, even if it's for a very short moment, that those two souls came together. Um, yeah, I that's think part that of 
what society doesn't realize, well, American society can't deal with death in any, any shape or form, especially right. miscarriage, because it's like, oh, it's only a miscarriage. You didn't know the baby. Um, it's not quite that, because there's so many hopes and dreams in that conception, in that pregnancy, for the family, for the woman, for even the father, you know, it, and the soul that's coming through. You know, very often the soul changes its mind, doesn't want to do this, or there was a reason the woman had to go through this journey, or the husband. So I don't think, I think you, you're, you know, you're spot on. You know, I don't think people recognize this, at least in this country. I can't speak for other countries, but at least in this country. What I often find is if I'm doing a reading with somebody, I feel you know, what you call the soul babies around them that have not come through. And mm -hmm. they typically, you know, have something very strong to say about why they didn't come through or how they're still around. And, you know, I mean, and, and even stillborns, you know, it, it happens um, across the board. Do you feel those babies that have not come through when you're doing your work who maybe have been lost, you know, to a miscarriage or, or a stillborn or something like that? Do you feel them around the woman that you're working on? Um, I do. I get, um, I, yeah, I, I, so I, I get physical sensations of where blocks might be. Um, and a lot of times then I do get specific messages of what, why that's coming through. Um, there's it's interesting because there's so many different reasons there's so it because there's so many different blocks that can come about and a lot of it doesn't really make sense um like i can give you an example of one client who what came through while i was working with her was i actually got a vision of a like a very dimly lit dining room but i had a very strong grandmother energy um and it was like there was so much sadness and heaviness like i could actually physically feel it in my heart and i could feel heart palpitations and it was like just really heavy um so you know i, I let the client know what was coming through and she said um you know she said well i'm not sure why that would be connected you know with my soul baby you know my but she explained to me that her grandmother now has dementia and her bedroom is right outside the dining the family dining room so she kind of could picture like what was happening um so after we had our session, she went back and talked to her family about it. And it turns out that her grandmother, when, when, was, when she was born, her, her own mother died in childbirth. And her grandmother, to this day, always hears a baby crying. And she's always looking for this baby and trying to, to you know, help this baby and, and stop the baby from crying. So there was this whole ancestral line of stuff that happened around childbirth, which was was causing a block for my client. So in that, in her, like even just acknowledging that and finding out that story, um, it cleared a huge block for my client. Um, and she got pregnant shortly after that, but it's just very interesting because it, it's, it's all tied together. Um, and it's, it's all these little moments of unblocking and healing um, and just kind of opening up these channels that kind of, help this process along. Yeah, I think it's wonderful that you work with ancestral lines because I think so often healers forget that. That, you know, it's um, it's not only in our DNA, but it's also in our energetic field. You know, it's just there. You know, the shamans and the indigenous people get that, but many healer, healers, um, they just, they forget about that. They forget about how it's imprinted on us. And so getting through that is very, um, it's very important. And it's very enlightening because there's always other messages that come through with all, and, and, and learning about our ancestral line because we tend to forget about that. And so I think when like you bring that up, it's also a story that the mother can tell this baby you know, about the ancestral line. So if somebody comes to you, do you, um, what tools can you pass on for people maybe who are trying to conceive? Like, do you tell people kind of, you know, what they can do around the conception to help them? Yeah, and you know, and the tools I can give them, um, you know, we can do a lot of work together, but on their own, they, it, it, they're very simple tools. <laughs> um, you know, my favorite one is just as a first step, especially when, you know, obviously people are kind of on different paths and different beliefs and things like that, but especially the clients who don't even realize that they can connect with, with other souls and connect with their soul baby. Um, I love to have them as a first step, write a letter to their soul baby. Um, it just like real, like pen and paper, write it down, right. you know, like, right. Say hello, open up. It literally opens up that channel. It's so instant. 
Um, and you can write anything you want in that letter, you know, t talk about what you're excited about, what their life will be like, what you're nervous about. It really doesn't matter. It's just, it's the, just the act of doing that. Um, and that step alone opens up so much. And then it, it, and they kind of look at me strange until like a few days later when they're texting me and they, and they start telling me all the, like, the signs that have been coming in and, you know, the messages they got like from messages on the radio and they turned it on. And um, anyway, so that opens up a huge channel. Um, and, you know, and the other tools are just really paying attention to their own energy. Um, a big one is, especially if they're working with doctors or fertility doctors or things like this, you know, it drives me crazy with these labels that, that get put on women, you know, with, you know, after six months of trying, they get labeled as, you know, this, you know, um, you know, infertile or whatever terms they want to use, but just that alone causes blocks all around you. And so the steps they can take is really managing their energy and paying attention. Maybe they just kind of like notice where their aura is and, and pulling that in close to them before they go into a doctor appointment. Um, you know, like really like strengthening their solar plexus and just keeping their power really, really within themselves. Um, really simple steps like that um, are tools that they can use. Um, my, my big thing, especially when it comes to the soul babies, they are constantly sending signs and messages. So it's really anything they can do, meditation, uh, journaling, um, you know, journal and ask direct questions to the soul baby. Um, really basic stuff, but the more you do it, the, your channels just go wide open. <laughs> you know, and when they're doing those journalings, I think what helps whenever you're talking to anyone in the spirit world is to ask the question, write the question with your dominant hand and answer, put the pen in your least dominant hand because mm. it does, because it, it, your brain kind of does it you don't have a lot of thinking involved in that so it's de it works spirit works better that way because you become a clear channel it's hard for mm -hmm. people to do but it's certainly something that could be mastered but i also agree with you like the claiming it like you know my husband will laugh at me he's like why do you say this if it hasn't happened yet because i believe it I believe it. And the power of intention, you know, and saying it out loud says, I believe so much that this is going to happen, that it happens, you know? Um, so, you know, not using the word I'm infertile, you know, like I never used that word until after my baby was born, you know? So, you know, not, don't use that word, say, oh no, I'm going to have a baby. Yeah, I'm going to have a baby. Are you pregnant? No, but I will be soon. You know, they, you know, and people may look at you like, oh, you're an idiot because we all know <laughs> you're having a problem, but it's saying, I so much believe in, um, the power above to help me and that I can manifest this in this wonderful way, because it's a good thing. You know, and I always told my kids, you know, you, you own your words, you know, so what you say out loud, you own. So be careful what you say. And I mean, I think we all struggle with that. We say things that we shouldn't say. We act impulsively or, you know, our emotions come out. But to like be very conscious of that, I think is really important because it's so having gone through that process. I mean, every month I would cry when I found out I wasn't pregnant. Well, that's. And that, and that's a good point. That, and that's why I try to remind women that this is your conception journey. You're already on it. So you're already, you know, you haven't conceived, but you're on this conception journey. It, the timing, I know it's hard to, to, for people, women to accept when each, you know, that month they get their period. But I, I try to tell them, okay, take ownership of that. You know, thank your body and say, thank you for knowing how to operate so naturally like that, you know, like take every piece of it as part of the journey. Like you're still on this conception journey. This is part of it. You know, I had another client who, um, from the time I started working with her until she actually had her baby was probably about a year. And in the beginning, you know, it was taking a while for her to conceive. Um, but she, she took this journey and she turned it into something so incredibly magical. I mean, she wound up, um, as we were working, there was all this like childhood trauma that came up that she, that she kind of forgot about. And, um, so that all came up and she really worked on healing all these different pieces. And then through that, she actually became um, a Reiki master, which was something that she never even thought about kind of delving into that world. And so through her journey, she, she just took it into a whole different direction and added all these wonderful things to her life that she, that never would have come about if she didn't kind of focus on this journey piece. And now she has her baby and, you know, and, and that's wonderful, but it became so much more than just, I'm trying, I want to be pregnant this month, done. 
Yeah, I think, you know, everything happens for a reason. Yeah. And there's a reason, you know, whether it's just to appreciate the pregnancy more or, okay, why, you know, you have to sit back and say, why is this happening? You know, um, what am I supposed to learn from this? But that's just about, I feel everything. So after these women become pregnant, do you still work with them? Um, some of them I do. Um, it just depends. They're all, everybody's so different about how they decide to work with me. Um, but yeah, but I, I work with them. You know, we do uh, Reiki, general heal, energy healing. Um, it just depends. So you don't, so, but do you support them within their pregnancies? Um, sometimes. <laughs> Again, it just, it just depends. Yeah. So do people have to come back repeated times? Or is it some, is it just like one time or two times and then they kind of move on? Um, it, it depends. I mean, it, honestly, it's pretty quick. Um, when I'm working with them, the information comes in very quickly about what the blocks are. Um, and if, it, you know, if, if they shift, it happens very quickly. So a lot of times it happens after one session. Um, and, you know, otherwise it's pretty quick. I, I find this like fascinating. I truly know, I know. nobody <laughs> that does what you do. No, I find it fascinating too. Every, I mean, every single person I'm working with fascinates me. It's just such so. a great job because you're, you're bringing through life. Like I'm not saying anything. I mean, what I do is can be very, I mean, it's painful, you know, it's happy. It's joyful because the, the souls coming through are saying something that the person needs, but you're bringing through life. You know, I mean, I think, I mean, that is so wonderful. And behalf of all of these people that you've helped, truly, thank, you know, thank you. Thank you. Because yeah. you're, you're, you're adding so much to this world that we live in, you know, and helping. There's so many women who so much want a child and cannot conceive. You know, it's right. rampant. You know, right. um, a lot of it, I think, has to do with the stress of society, the stress that we put on ourselves, and the blockages from the past that we just can't get over. So um, I think it's wonderful that you're doing that. Thank you. There is a man standing behind you, okay? okay. <laughs> um, I feel like he's a grandfather. Um, he's singing, um, he's saying that he was born in the fall and that everybody recognizes his birthday. Do you have a grandfather who is either born or passed in the fall? He has a couple of daughters. Yeah, it's, it's probably my mother's father. Okay, is there a Christine in the family? Do you know? No. Because it feels like a Christine and a Maria. Do you know who Maria a, is? Maria's my aunt, his daughter. Okay. Uh, I don't know who Christine is. Okay, he's talking about a Christine. I don't know who Christine is. Do you know if your grandmother had a miscarriage? She has. Okay, yeah. that's Christine. Okay. okay, he named the baby Christine. Um, he's with that baby, okay? Um, but he's with your aunt, because I feel like your aunt is going through something. Um, whatever it is, um, he's holding her up, okay? He's mm -hmm. saying he knows he was much loved, okay? Um, he knows it. He knows that he is missed, okay? He's very much around you, okay? Mm -hmm. And he's clapping. This, so this is your mother's father? Yeah. He loves your father. Loves yeah. your father. Um, he's saying, didn't get him, didn't understand him, but I, I love him. He's a good, solid man. And that you don't have much to worry about right now. Who's Anna? Do you know uh, who Anna is? I have a friend, Anna. <laughs> what about on, um, no, this is a relative. What about on your husband's side? There's an older woman named Anna. Uh, there's an aunt Anna still on my mom's side. On your mother's side, is my, she living? my my great aunt. Okay, she passed. Yes. Yeah, she's with your grandfather. Um, okay. They're together. Um, he's saying, you know, um, she can be fun, but you have to cut through the layers to see that. Okay. <laughs> um, but you know, he's saying that um, that you, that he's blessing you and everything that you're doing, and he'll help you write the book. Okay, um, because a book needs to be written. So tell me, if people want to get in touch with you, how can they do that for like, um, they, a session? Yeah, uh, they can uh, go to my website. They can email me. Um, my website, website is lifesketching. Okay. So it's lifesketching.com. 
and it's uh, Micah at lifesketching.com is my email. So they can, can just you reach do directly this through Zoom or on the phone? Yeah, I do Zoom. Um, I'll do in person if they want or can. Um, either way. Okay, because in this day and age, unfortunately, so much has to be done by, by Zoom or on the telephone. Right. So I tell people all the time, energy is energy, and you can tap into it, whether someone's sitting in front of you or, you know, when I do readings for people, you know, in Africa or Australia, it doesn't seem to matter. It's the same thing. Yep. Well, thank you so much for coming on today, Micah. Thank you for um, having me. Continue all your good work. I will. Thank you. Thank you.